Hello everyone, welcome to Anat AV. Today we'll be talking about the liver. More specifically, in this first part of the video, we'll consider its location, anatomical divisions, external features and relations. In the second part of this two-part series, we'll be talking about the blood supply, the venous drainage, the lymphatic drainage and the functional division of the liver. The liver is found in the upper abdomen and lies in the upper right quadrant, extending to the left quadrant as well. More specifically, we can consider its location according to the abdominal regions. These regions being mainly the right hypochondrial and the epigastric regions. However, the leftmost part of the liver also extends to the left hypochondrial region. Understanding this basic location of the liver is key to surface market on the abdomen. The liver, when viewed anteriorly, is roughly triangular. The three points of the surface marking of the liver are thus. The fifth right rib at the mid-axillary line, the lowermost part of the triangle being the tenth rib in the mid-axillary line, and the fifth left intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line. However, this should not be a perfect triangle as shown. The central part of this horizontal line dips downwards because of the lower central part of the diaphragm which the liver is directly beneath. The liver is divided on both an anatomical and a functional basis. It's important to know that the liver is anatomically divided into a larger right and much smaller left lobe. The anterior and superior dividing line of these lobes is the falciform ligament. Posteriorly, the dividing line is formed by the ligamentum venosum. Inferiorly, the lobes are divided by the ligamentum teres. The two smaller lobes of the liver are the inferiorly located quadrate and more posterior caudate lobes. Before moving on to the structures in relation to the liver, we'll provide a brief rundown of its basic external features. The external surface of the liver can be divided into two main parts, the visceral and the diaphragmatic surface. The diaphragmatic surface is further divided into anterior, superior, posterior and right surfaces. There are no distinct borders separating these four areas. However, a very sharp inferior border separates the anterior and the visceral surface. This border continues as a rounded border to the right, separating the right and visceral surfaces as well. The posterior and visceral surfaces are not clearly divided. To better understand the two smaller lobes of the liver, the quadrate and the caudate, there is an important group of structures we must know about on the posterior inferior surface. You can observe these structures forming a very distinct edge shape. The right vertical limb is formed by the inferior vena cava and the gallbladder. The left vertical limb is formed by the fissures for the ligamentum venosum and the ligamentum teres. The connecting horizontal limb is an extremely important structure, the porta hepatis. Thus, we can clearly see the quadrate lobe formed inferiorly and the caudate lobe formed posteriorly. The porta hepatis is a deep transverse fissure that is located in the visceral surface of the liver. It's the entry point of the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic duct leaves the liver at the porta hepatis. Furthermore, this region also accompanies the lymphatics and the autonomic nerves supplying the liver. Now that the external surfaces have been dealt with, it's time to consider the relations of the liver. The peritoneum covers the liver at the porta hepatis and the fissure for the ligamentum venosum. Lining the posterior inferior surface, it reaches anteriorly and superiorly, where it is reflected as the falciform ligament. From here, it extends from the anterior superior surface of the liver to the anterior abdominal wall and extends to the diaphragm. From the diaphragm, 
the right leaf extends to the right and backwards, forming the superior coronary ligament, which curves backwards to form the inferior coronary ligament. The point of reflection here is thickened and is known as the right triangular ligament. The inferior coronary ligament then extends upwards and to the left, passing anterior to the IVC, incidentally making the IVC retroperitoneal, to attach to the fissure for the ligamentum venosum, from which it continues downwards to reach the porta hepatis. It surrounds the porta hepatis and the structures within. The left leaf of the falciform ligament extends to the left, reflecting on itself, forming the left triangular ligament. This inserts to the ligament of venosum, which follows the same course as its right counterpart. Between the superior and inferior coronary ligaments and the inferior vena cava is an area of the liver devoid of peritoneum. This region is known as the bare area, which is in direct contact with the diaphragm. The diaphragmatic surface of the liver has, of course, one very obvious relation, the diaphragm. On its anterior surface, the diaphragm is anterior on either side of the midline, while more centrally, the liver is in contact with the muscle of the anterior abdominal wall, the rectus abdominis. Almost all of the liver is behind the ribs and costal cartilages. However, at the costal angle, a part of the anterior surface passes upwards from right to left. The tone of the rectus abdominis muscle will prevent the liver from being palpated in this area. The diaphragm separates the liver from the pleura, above the level of the T10 rib, and from both pleura and lung, above the level of the T8 rib. The visceral surface of the liver has easily the most number of important visceral relations. Important among them being the stomach, the duodenum, the hepatic flexor of the colon, the gallbladder and the right kidney. We'll start from right to left. The bare area of the liver is in direct contact with the diaphragm. On the inferior aspect of this is the right suprarenal gland, with no peritoneum in between. Next to this is the IVC, lodged deeply within a groove. The hepatic veins open into the floor of this cable groove. The IVC forming the right upper limb of the edge, as said before, is to the right of the chordate lobes and therefore between the right and chordate lobes. The chordate lobe lies in the superior recess of the lesser sac. The right inferior phrenic artery passes just above the celiac trunk, on the right crura of the diaphragm. The chordate lobe is thus related to all of the said structures, the right inferior phrenic artery, the celiac trunk and the right crust of the diaphragm. Interestingly, it's the inferior vena cava which is the main support from which the liver hangs in the abdominal cavity, and not all the various ligaments we have mentioned before. Adjacent to the chordate lobe, on the left lobe, is the esophageal impression. Going over to the inferior surface from above, there is a large impression for the stomach on the left lobe. On the quadrate lobe, you have the relation of the pylorus opening into the duodenum. It's important to note that the quadrate lobe becomes related to part of the transverse colon when the stomach is empty. Towards the right, the right kidney, the second part of the duodenum, the left hepatic flexure are all related to the visceral surface of the liver. And that brings to an end the first video in this two-part video series on the liver. In the next video, we'll be discussing the blood supply, the lymphatic drainage, and the functional divisions of the liver. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, we would highly appreciate if you would like, comment, subscribe and share it with your friends or anyone who is interested in learning anatomy as a subject. I'm Ramit Fonseca and thank you for watching Anat AV.